The International Organization for Migration is sounding the alarm in Sudan, warning urgent action is needed to prevent a humanitarian catastrophe from unfolding. The United Nations agency says that more than 300,000 people have been displaced because of fighting and the impact is being felt into neighboring countries. The agency's director is Antonio Vitorino and he joins us now from Geneva. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, how dire right now is the current refugee situation in Sudan? And also, if you could talk about the other countries, the neighboring countries as well. First of all, inside uh, Sudan, as you said, 334,000 people have been displaced because of the fighting. But uh, the situation, the humanitarian situation in the country is very dire. Because in practical terms, the fight is ongoing, uh, in, uh, particularly in Khartoum, but also in the second largest uh, city, Niala. And uh, the humanitarian actors do not have access to the people that are in need of uh, life-saving assistance. But also it's spreading to the countries in the region. Just to give you an idea, 300,000 uh, people from South Sudan are refugees in Sudan, and they are going back to South Sudan. 100,000 Chadians are registered in Sudan. They are going back to Chad. And these countries are very vulnerable. Uh, they cannot cope with this mass arrival that we are witnessing. And so you, you, you talked about that 300,000 number. What are you forecasting in terms of the numbers of people needing humanitarian support in the coming weeks and months? Well, and before the fighting started, uh, 16 million people inside Sudan were already in need of uh, uh, life basic assistance uh, and support. And uh, today the situation is much worse, as you can imagine. There is no water, food uh, is coming to the limits, there is no fuel, and uh, there, is, uh, cut, there are cuts uh, of uh, uh, electricity. And above all, uh, 30 attacks on health facilities have been perpetrated during the fight. So the humanitarian situation inside Sudan is extremely difficult. And until now, we have not been able to reach out to the people that are in need. So the top priority, and I hope that the conversations that are taking place now in uh, Saudi Arabia, will allow for a humanitarian pause so that the humanitarian actors can reach in safe conditions to those who are in need. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you know, what, what sort of humanitarian assistance is needed right now on the ground, but can, can assistance even get uh, to those people that are affected right now, or is that one of the major hurdles that, you know, you're facing? That is definitely our top priority, guaranteeing a humanitarian pause for having access to the people in need. Because uh, in real terms, uh, uh, only in four states, the situation allows the humanitarians to reach out to the people in need. In the rest of the country, that access is not possible. And even more, uh, very several uh, UN agencies uh, had their offices and warehouses looted uh, and the uh, WFP tried to reach out with food, which is a top priority in the last two days. And it was enabled because the convoys of food were looted. So the situation inside the country is uh, a mess. And uh, we need to have some guarantees that we can reach the people that are starving and that have, are in need of water and medicines. What is your ask of the Canadian government? What do you want countries like Canada to do right now? I must say, honestly, that the humanitarian response plan to Sudan is very much underfunded. Only 14% has been funded up to date. And definitely we need to scale up our operations as soon as the conditions are met. As you said, Travis, not just in Sudan, but also in the neighboring countries, particularly those who have been receiving many people coming back home or Sudanese uh, fleeing the country. And so uh, my appeal to uh, Canada, as other all donor countries, is to uh, stand up and provide uh, goods, uh, in-kind donations, and of course, financial support uh, for this massive humanitarian operation that is desperately needed in the entire region. Yeah, I know, as you said, you know, even before the fighting started, the situation was dire in Sudan. Uh, what does the ongoing fighting mean for your organization trying to help those escape food insecurity in that region right now? 
Of course, that uh, we have a very big operation in Sudan, as you can imagine. We have more than 300 staff members who are also impacted by the current uh, uh, fight. We are now assembling them. Uh, the United Nations has established a coordination hub in Port Sudan, which appears to be a place where we can uh, coordinate the cooperation among the different agencies. And as soon as we reassemble our staff in, in a specific location, we will be ready to restart our humanitarian operations. But of course, for that, we need an humanitarian pause. Uh, listen, we appreciate, we certainly appreciate the time today. That's Antonio Vitorino joining us from Geneva.